This is Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects course, you will learn the basics to advanced features of After Effects. Interface, shape layers, motion tracking, compositing, and more. During these tutorials, feel free to pause, rewind, and ask questions. I will be using After Effects CC version 12.2, but most of the techniques learned can be used in older versions. In this video, we will cover pre-comps, parenting, pick whipping, and basic expressions. So let's fire up After Effects and get started. So here I am in After Effects. I already have a composition made. It's just called Comp 1. It's 10 seconds long. And let's go ahead and just change the name of that comp. So I can highlight it right here. I'm going to click Return on the keyboard. I'm going to call this Parenting. Why? Because that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about parenting, pre-composing, and pick whipping, and some basic expressions. So. First off, before we can parent things together, we need to have some elements in here. Let's just get a new solid. Let's give this a nice blue color. Click OK. So there's one. And what I can do here is I can actually just scale this down to whatever size I want, or I could make it that size to begin with when I created the solid. But I'm going to just bring this down to a little square, about like that. And then let's get my text tool. And let's call this blue square. Now, in a different video, I'm going to talk all about the text tool and all the different things you can do with that. So I'm not going to get too far into text tool today, but I am just going to have some text here. So now I have two layers down in my timeline. And there's some things I can do with this in order to make them work together. The first thing I want to talk about is pre-composing. Now, pre-composing is basically like nesting if you're used to nesting in, say, Premiere Pro. And how to do that is to highlight both layers, go to Layer, all the way down to Pre-Compose. And as you can see here, it gives you the hotkey in order to do that, which is Command-Shift-C or Shift-Command-C. If you're on a Windows, it would be Control-Shift-C. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to highlight both of these. I'm going to hit on my keyboard, Command-Shift-C. And it brings up this dialog box that says pre-compose. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a new composition, put both of these layers in there, and then stick that composition into this parenting composition I have. And so I'm going to call this pre-comp, because that's what it is. And it gives you the option to move all attributes into the new composition. Now, I don't have any effects on this yet. If I had some effects on these, then it would give me another option to leave all attributes in parenting. So let's try that now. So I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to add an effect to the blue square. So I'm going to come over here in my effects and presets. And let's go and let's do a directional blur this time. Drag it and drop it right on the square. Let's change the blur length and the direction. And then let's now pre-compose just this one. And so when I pre-compose just the one that has the directional blur on it, Command Shift C, it's going to give me the option right here to leave all attributes in parenting or to move all attributes. And what that means is it's talking about this right here, this directional blur that I have applied to this. So if I leave all attributes in parenting, which is the composition that I'm in now, it's going to create a new comp right here. This is the name. So we'll just call it blue comp. And it'll move this layer into it, but all the attributes such as the scale, the rotation, even this blur will stay applied to the composition. So let me just show you how that works. I do this now, and when I click on it, you can see the directional blur is already on this and not in this composition. So you can see this is the original size. And if I come in here to scale, you can see that it's been scaled down. So let's undo that, Command-Z, and now let's do the composition again. So pre-comp, Command-Shift-C, and if I move all attributes, let's call this blue comp, then I, when I select that, I don't see the effect here anymore. If I go into scale, it's set at 100%, and when I go into this composition, it looks just like this. So that's the difference between moving attributes and not moving attributes. So I'm going to undo these, and because what I want to do is I want to comp these both together. So Command-Shift-C, 
and let's call this pre-comp. And it automatically moves them both together because I've got two different things and I can't keep the attributes because I've got two different sets of attributes and they would conflict. So it's automatically going to move over both sets of attributes into the new composition. So what I have here now is they work together. It's basically a, it's a piece of footage that I can do things to. Now I can add to this footage. Let's do this again. Let's do a fast blur onto this. And they're both going to blur at the same time. So pre-comping is a way of kind of organizing your footage. I can come into this. So I just double clicked on it and open up that composition. And let's go ahead and do a quick animation. So I'm going to animate the position. So I set the keyframe at the beginning. I move the playhead forward and I moved it. When I come into this parent, it's going to move. But if I look at the position of this composition, nothing is changing. It's basically just footage. And so again, I can come in here, I can add a blur to it, and everything's going to be applied over. So that's pre-composing. Pre-composing you use all the time. I'm just going to get this across to you. You're going to use pre-composing all of the time in After Effects. It's very handy of kind of organizing your footage. So maybe you have a whole thing that needs to do one thing. Um, you can pre-compose it into one nice little composition. Now I must warn you that pre-composing is going to get confusing here in the project window if you're doing lots and lots of different pre-comps. So make sure that you label them properly and so you know how to find them. But pre-composing is a way of grouping things together. Now another way of grouping things together is called parenting. So let's go in and I'm going to undo all of this back to my original two squares I had. Or the, the square and the, the text. Now parenting I can do without pre-composing it. So I have the blue square. Let's take off this blur. And then I have the word blue square. And if I parent the word blue square to the blue square, let's see what happens. And how you do that is over here where it says parent. And then there's this little, this is called a pick whip. And it looks kind of like a cinnamon roll or something kind of rolled up like a snail. And what I can do is I grab this and see there's a line kind of going now and I drag it and drop it right onto that and it's going to parent this blue square text to the blue square item and then you can see right there it even says over here this is the parent so if you don't use the pick whip you can use this menu item right here and what this is going to do think of parents and children if you have children your children are crazy and they can run around and do whatever they want on their own and that doesn't mean that you're running around and doing whatever you want. But when the parent goes somewhere, the kids will go with them, if that makes sense. So right now, this blue square is the child of this solid layer. So I'm going to do something to the solid layer. I'm going to bring up my rotation. And as I rotate, you can see blue square will rotate with it, and now adopts that anchor point as its anchor point. But let's go into the attributes of just the blue square by itself, the text layer, it rotates on its own. So, and also I can move position on its own and things like that. If I come back in here onto this, move this position, it's going to follow it. So wherever this solid layer goes, the text layer will follow it. Or wherever the parent goes, the child will follow it. But wherever the child goes, the parent doesn't have to follow. So the child follows the parent, not the parent following the child. So you can set up some pretty complex kind of things this way. So for instance, I'm going to delete this text layer and let's just have some different um, shape layers or some solids. I'm going to bring in a new solid layer and I want this to be a thin, long solid layer. So let's go width to be 300 and height to be just 20. Click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the anchor point all the way over to the left side. And so I can do that by going to the transform and setting the anchor point to 0. And now when I rotate, see it rotates around that anchor point. So I'm now I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to duplicate these twice. Let's take 
the middle one, set it up there, and then the top, and set it right there. And I want to now parent these all together. So I'm going to take the top layer, parent it to the middle one, take the middle layer, parent it to the bottom one. Now, right now, as I rotate this top one, everything, or this bottom layer, everything's going to rotate together. Let's bring up the rotate value on all of these. So if I highlight all of these layers and just hit R on the keyboard, it'll bring just the rotation value on all of these. So now if I rotate that, it's just, it's going to affect the second, the last layer, but not the first layer. So I can start to build kind of almost like an arm type thing going on. So that's how parenting works. Okay. The next way of com hooking things together is through expressions. And expressions is kind of a scripting language built into After Effects. And you don't see them up front. You have to kind of access the dialog box. And how you access those, well, let's first set all these to zero. And let's unparent them. And how you access them is by hitting down Alt on your keyboard and clicking on the stopwatch and it brings in this expression box here and what I can do now is I can with this expression use this pick whip and pick whip the rotation value of that so now they will move together at the same time I can do the same thing with this expression on this next one and then pick whip that so when I rotate this bottom one, they will all move at the same time. It's different than parenting because they all still stay in their same position, but they have the same rotational value. So I bring this all the way up to 98. That one's 98. That one's 98. And you can do some cool things with this when you mix expressions by pick whipping and parenting together. So you can see what it does is it writes this little code in here, this comp.layer, and it names the layer transform rotation so it's taking the value from this and applying it to that but when I do that and parent them together like how I had before watch what happens see how they kind of move almost uh, together it creates a really kind of a cool look okay and you can link things together through expressions, through parenting, through comping. And then one last way that we can link things together. Let's go ahead and take all this off. And let's turn off the expression and set all this back to zero. Is with a null object. So I'm going to open up layer, go to new, create a new null object. And what a null object is, it's basically an empty layer. There's nothing on it. It's just null. And I can take all these layers and then highlight them all and then drag and drop the pick whip from the parent. And now they're all parented to the null. So now this null object, I can change the scale like this. I can rotate it and everything will move with it and the position. Everything's linked to that null. Now the last way I want to show you only works if you're on After Effects CC 12.1 and above. And it's a new kind of a trick. And it's really kind of cool. So I want to show you how to do that now. I'm going to delete the null. I'm going to delete both of these. And so I've got just this one. And it rotates. Right? And I can move and I can do all sorts of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that layer. I'm going to come to edit. And I'm going to go to copy with property links. And this is a new feature in the After Effects CC 12.1. Okay, now that I've got that copied with property links, then I'm going to go to edit and paste. Now I've got two of these. And what has happened is it pasted it right on top of each other because all of the links are connected. So when I adjust this, rotation, you can see it does that too. When I adjust this anchor point, 
it does that too. So it's basically pick whipping everything for you in advance. Now say you don't want everything to be picked whip. Well, I can just hold down option on my keyboard and click that stopwatch for anchor point. Let's move this out of the way. And now every time I do something with this, it's going to it's going to be adjusted the same way. So it's another way of doing it. Sometimes this works good, sometimes it's null object, sometimes it's parenting, sometimes it's just pick whipping one value, sometimes it's pre-composing. But whatever it is, you need to learn how to connect these layers together so you can add effects to multiple layers, so you can have one con layer control another, because it's really going to make After Effects a lot easier once you understand these principles. So again, the ways are pre-composing, which is creating a new composition, putting those elements in there, and then having that composition in the original composition. The next one is parenting, where a child can move independently of the parent, but when the parent moves, the child moves with it. Then there's using some basic expressions. Remember, we open up that dialog box, and then we use this pick whip. And then the last one is this copy with property links. Then we open up this expression box, and we use the pick whip to pick whip position to position or things like that, where we can connect attributes within layers. And then the other one was using a null object where you can parent everything to a null. And then the last one is using this copy with property links. And again, that's for the newer versions of After Effects. And if you don't have the newer versions of After Effects, then you just need to do all of these links by hand using the expression dialog box and using a pick whip. So that is it for this video on connecting layers together, pre-comping, parenting, pick whipping, all of the above. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and participating in this course. Feel free to comment and share this video with others. In our next video, we will cover compositing, transfer modes, chroma key, rotoscoping, masking, and track mats. Again, this is Mikey Bort for PremiumBeat.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.